Hi, I'm Anthony. I created Car Dependency Index a couple months ago and I'm amazed at how my little urbanist project has taken off. I'm grateful for all the support I've received, which sustains my energy for this. This idea really came to fruition after a recent trip I took to Honolulu, where my dad is from, and a place to which I have a deep childhood and spiritual connection. Like the city where I grew up, Los Angeles, Honolulu has become an oppressively car-dependent place with 16-lane highways and seas of parking lots. It pained me to see this with my new urbanist glasses, so I started documenting it, which is kind of cathartic. And then I thought, well, I should document it everywhere. I should develop a scale. And I started out by comparing public transit to driving in different cities on a model trip from the airport to downtown. There isn't a city on earth without car-centric elements, but the US and Canada seem to have the highest concentration of cities in which walking, cycling, and taking public transit are totally subordinated to driving. On this channel, I'll look at different cities through the lens of walkability, of cycling, of public transit, of urbanism. I woke up only about a year ago to how car-dependent our world is after watching a video about strodes from Not Just Bikes. Now that I'm awake, I'm radicalized, and I'm coming for your city, your town. I hope it's ready. Give me something to show besides highways, strodes, and parking lots. I think we'd all appreciate having something more. So here I'm doing one of the trips that I do most often. I'm biking over to my local climbing gym, which is called The Hive. I absolutely love climbing. This is my neighborhood. It's called Osborne Village, and it's one of the most walkable parts of Winnipeg. I quite like it here. This street has curb cuts, but no crosswalk, and the traffic can be quite heavy and fast sometimes. The state this street is in is pretty typical around here. Back lanes like this one are very common in Winnipeg. They have the potential to be a nice, traffic-calmed space to walk or bike, but I used to live right next to this one, and it's pretty heavy with car traffic and sometimes even semi-trucks, so it's kind of just a blight on the neighborhood. The on-street parking here creates huge blind spots, which makes turning unnecessarily dangerous and stressful. It also encourages drivers to pull way up and block the sidewalk so they can look for oncoming traffic. Here we've got a slip lane. Not Just Bikes recently talked about how dangerous these are in a video called Crossing the Streets Shouldn't Be Deadly, But It Is. The problem with slip lanes is that they're designed to prioritize driver convenience over pedestrian safety. Without the slip lane, drivers are physically forced to at least slow down at the light and make a sharp 90 degree turn. The slip lane lets them skip the light and take the turn on a gentle curve. It prevents drivers from having to slow down at the exact time they should be slowing down and paying attention. And if they do have to stop or slow down, this design encourages them to look only to the left for oncoming traffic and to stop right in the crosswalk so they can merge more easily. And here we have Donald. This is one of the most pedestrian hostile intersections in my neighborhood. You can see the sign that's been placed right in the crosswalk. Check out this video I took on the other side of Donald. This crosswalk on the right here, um, pedestrians are supposed to have right of way, but <laughs> yeah, you can see that crossing here would be a little rough. There are a lot of details that make this a pedestrian hostile intersection, but what it comes down to is the fact that Donald is basically a highway. The street design resembles a highway in many ways. 
It's a simplified environment with wide, straight lines and few obstacles, all of which gives drivers a sense that they can safely go fast. The problem is that people walk and bike here, and as Not Just Bikes puts it, high-speed traffic is incompatible with lots of human activity. And here's my bus stop. This is Harkness Station on the new Rapid Transit Way. I sometimes come here and throw my bike on the bus when I don't feel like biking all the way to the gym. This is also a lot less stressful than the route I have to take if I bike the whole way, which involves biking on some strodes. And this is me. Hi. I got super stoked when I had this idea to put my bike on the bus and have the gimbal and camera attached to it. Check this out. I do wear a mask on the bus. Yeah, let's go. That's Osborne Station. It's quite a new station, and although it looks pretty big and cool, I actually don't find it to be as comfortable as just a regular enclosed bus shelter. The wind howls through here in the winter, and the heaters, which you can push a button to activate, don't work all that well. Also, there's lots of bird poop here. You ready to go through this tunnel? Sweet. Yeah, the rapid transit way is awesome. Monitors like this one on the top right are quite useful as they show the bus times, but a lot of them aren't working and show some kind of error message. This is my stop. It's nice that they're cleaning the bus shelter here. I hope these people are well compensated for their important work. I try to always thank my bus driver. Off we go. This is part of the bike network around the Rapid Transit Way. I think these bike paths are the nicest in the city, because although there are others that are equally pleasant to ride on, these ones are the most useful for actually getting around. This is nice. Here we are at Waverly, another terrible intersection for pedestrians and cyclists. And this one, like the suburb Waverly itself, is relatively new. This is basically an intersection of two highways, or two strodes more accurately. And if you're wondering why highways would be designed to intersect, or why pedestrians would be expected to cross them, I'm right there with you. Let's see if we can make it through this slip lane without getting cut off or hit. That nice bike lane ends back there, so now I'm biking on the sidewalk, because I definitely ain't biking on this road. I've never seen this parking lot even 10% full. 
Imagine what we could do with this space. Park, play structure, exercise equipment, bike path. Every time I see a place like this, I dream of what we could do with it. Breathing some nice exhaust here. This is Wilkes, and every time I bike here, I'm scared. Even when cars pass me properly by driving in the opposite lane, they're still going like 70, 80 kilometers an hour, and I definitely shouldn't have to bike in a place where cars are driving past me at 70 kilometers an hour. Here we are. I made it to the climbing gym in one piece.